Guys, we are officially in the last three months of 2023. Are you guys ready for 2024? Because I am shocked and still processing things from 2020 until now. But this is the period where a lot of K-beauty brands have just released their autumn winter collections or about to release their autumn winter collections. And I wanted to share with you guys my honest thoughts and opinions. Whether I like them, dislike them, I plan on picking them up or maybe you plan on picking it up or you just need, you know, second opinions. So we're gonna get into that today. Let's start off with one of our favorite brands, Peripera. They have released this autumn dessert theme kind of collection. So you have a face and eye palette, a couple of blushes, as well as three new Ink Mood Glowy Tints. I love the Ink Mood Glowy Tint formula. It's one of my favorite formulas. And the three new colors are... 18 Nude Area, 19 Morph Chaos, as well as 20 Brown Yakwa. Yakwa is the dessert or the cookie itself. And I think they really nailed the whole like concept and the imagery. Like the embossing of the Yakwa dessert in the blusher, in the face palette. Very, very cute. On top of the Ink Mood Glowy Tints of the caps, they also have the print of it. It's so cute. I love it. I love little details to packaging like this but most importantly is the quality of the products i do like the ink mood glowy tint and 19 morph chaos is really like calling my name at the moment based on swatches mm, it's a color that i think i would really enjoy the face and eye palette i'm a bit meh to be honest because um this particular palette itself is the third in the lineup the original first two, I did see it in stores in person when I was in Korea earlier this May. I went into the store with full intention of picking up one of these palettes because I saw it online and I see, hey, cute packaging, I love it. However, the shadows in this particular palette end up looking really similar to one another. Like the vibes, the colors, the tonal value of these shadows are too close to one another to the point where it's a really... You're buying duplicates within the palette itself. It's like, am I, is this really worth it? Also, this palette is really long in length. So when it comes to thinking, of, oh, maybe I could buy for travel. I personally wouldn't reach out for this for travel because it's such an awkward long length. I don't think I can fit this particular palette in any makeup bag or whatsoever. Then it becomes like a hassle to keep. You have to put it, you know, in the separate packaging, things like that. A normal eyeshadow palette like this, like what I'm wearing today, it's like size of my palm, which is I think still reasonable, right? But this was like long, like like until maybe like this length in a sense, like this length. When it comes to certain makeup products, I feel that the practicality of certain palettes or products, it does play a part in whether I will reach out for them. If it's too clunky, if it's too bulky, weird lengths and stuff like that. I don't usually reach out for them, so I think it's a safe, easy pass for me for the palette. The blushes are really cute. The Pure Blush formula, I enjoy that formula. I own two, and I really like to use number one, Calm Pink. That's like one of my go-to pink blushes that will go well with any of my makeup looks. I grab that a lot. These colors, mmm... They lean a little bit warm, which nowadays I lean more towards cool tone blushes or if not very neutral blushes. I think this has really strong uh, warm undertones so I think I will pass on these blushes. The most recent KBD drop would be from Wake Make and it's the Glow Collection. When I saw the eyeshadow palette of this, I'm like, wow, this is pretty. I adore it. I love it because it's not the same as a lot of typical K-beauty brand shadows. Maybe it's the fact that we don't really see blues from K-beauty brands. And it makes me very, very curious on how the blues, the icy blues, will actually perform. I saw swatches and I'm like, oh my god, this is so cute. I love it so much. But then afterwards, like, reality started, like, sinking down on me. I'm like, this will look really, really light. And it's very hard to put, like, much definition into these looks. Again, I wanted to buy one of these soft blurring eyeshadow palettes, the new ones. And I saw it in stores in person again in Korea. I was like, I want to buy one of this. When I got to the gondola itself, I'm like, am I looking at the six same eyeshadow palettes? Because that's what it looked like. And no, I wasn't. It was six different palettes. I was like, 
wow, they all look the same, for real. So I was like, I don't think I need such an eyeshadow palette. If it looks so similar to my eye in the palette itself, is there really going to be any difference when it's on my eyelids? I don't think so. So that's why I passed on it. However, I currently am wearing this old version, the Wake Me Soft Blurring Palette. This is the older layout and formula, I believe. I'm currently wearing this on my eyes. I think this one, the older version, has more tonal value difference and it just looks so much better. I mean, yeah, it's a very light palette if you compare it to a lot of like the Western eyeshadow palettes out there, I, I admit. I'd rather have a 12 pen palette with a very conducive and condensed kind of color story rather than have a bigger palette. But then the shadows are repeating themselves and then like, what's the point of it? Wake Make did come up with a water glow coating cushion as well. They have shades from number 19, 21, 22, and 23. So, you know, it's very typical Korean cushion foundation uh, color range. I think the compact itself is very, very pretty. And I think it's a mesh type of cushion foundation. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a mesh. Personally, for me, I'm not the biggest fan of mesh cushions because I understand the purpose where it's like supposed to dispense product evenly and everything. But so far, all of my experiences with mesh cushions, a little bit too patchy on my skin for some reason. Maybe it's just the nature of the formula of these mesh cushions. And I don't need another cushion foundation at the moment. I still have cushion foundations I have not opened from my trip back in Korea back then. So pass. <laughs> Wait, is that lip balm or lip tint? I see a lip balm. Okay, so there's a lip balm and two lip tints, is it? And again, these type of sheer, no colour, barely any colour lip balms are very very popular right now and I guess it's just giving Dior lip glow vibes. I've only tried one lip tint from Weight Make and I do like the formula of it but the thing is that sometimes it just wears into nothing, like it just disappears off my lips. Even without any eating or drinking, it just wears off into like the air for some reason. Holika Holika has a new fall winter collection and it's along the lines of tarot reading and crystals and I think, I personally think it's a cute concept. I gotta admit, and I love the colour story of both of the eyeshadow palettes and the whole collection itself. It's that mauve pinks, that kind of stuff. Loki kind of reminds me of Sailor Moon as well. They also have three like dewy lip balms kind of thing, as well as nail polishes. I think that's like an Egyosal pen, or if not an eyeliner if I'm not wrong. Oh, it's a liner, sorry. It's a liner. It looks kind of like a purple liner. Ooh. I'll be honest, even though I have used K-Beauty for so long, Holika Holika was never a brand that was really on my radar because I just felt that a lot of the things and products that they came out with, it's cute, yeah, but maybe to like tweens? This collection though really speaks to me. I like the concept of it. I might, maybe I'll pick up one eyeshadow palette, maybe. Because I know that these are already available on YesStyle as well, so... Maybe I'll shop and have a look around. Maybe I'll see some swatches online. Correction, there are five dewy lip balms. The texture of these, they look so good. Oh my gosh, I am shocked. Like, this is coming from Holika Holika, really? The one that produced very cutesy ootsy kind of packaging? Wow. Oh my god, and the nail colours too. Ah, this is stunning. I love the colors. It's literally purples. My favorite color. I must say I have tried this particular nail polish formula from Holika Holika. This is kind of like a butter theme if I'm not wrong. It's very like brown, very warm in tone. I remember not being very fond of the formula if it's like lighter colors, but if it was the deeper color, it was alright because the lighter colors were a bit too streaky. If I am not wrong, if I remember correctly, so I'm gonna try to cycle myself a little bit. But eyeshadow palettes and the lip. Mm. And of course we have Etude, every K-beauty lover. It is one of the staple brands. It was for mine. And I think they have just released two new eyeshadow palettes, two new glow fixing tint as well as two blushes. I love the blushes. They're so cute. They're in a little like heart shape. 
Um, I'm not sure is it in like a powder form or is it a cream form? It's super cute. Oh my gosh. I love the purple blush. We do realize there's a pattern going on right here right now, right? <laughs> because of my makeup, my clothes, and my room, everything. Anything that is purple, give it to me. Oh, and they're also coming out with an eyeshadow primer. <gasps> oh my gosh. Let me tell you, not enough brands create eyeshadow primers, I swear. Because the only really good ones are like from Urban Decay, MAC. Those two are the ones that I use all the time. But when I was a broke student, I didn't have much money to buy makeup. I was on a budget. I always use the Etude Proof 10 Eye Primer. That was one that I always repurchased and it always did the job very well. I have tried Etude's eyeshadow palettes before and I think the only one that I really really enjoyed were either like the single eyeshadows which were like $7 a piece. Very pricey. Couldn't afford to buy like a lot of colours. And also the Cafe one if I am not wrong. This new particular formula, I'm very curious. I wonder will it be good or will it be very powdery and ashy? not a lot of pigment because I remember back in the day the Play Color Eye, the old formula, I remember a lot of people complaining saying that there's literally nothing coming out of the pens. I swatched it in stores as well, didn't really enjoy it. So I'm very curious, especially the purple one because it's really calling my name. And I actually might be picking up the glow fixing tint as well. The two colors are 08 Red Sangria and 09 Rich Beige. I do really enjoy the glow fixing tints. I actually do reach out for them and if you want to see a full in-depth review, my thoughts on it, I'll put a card up above. Go and check that video out. I think they'll be very very helpful for you guys if you plan to pick it up. Like you want to see swatches, all that, go check that video out. The red sangria colour. It's like a juicy point red colour. Cool tone pink, is it? I, I think at least. But really pretty colour. I'm looking for the eye primer, I swear. I really want to try and find an affordable eyeshadow primer. I, I can't find it. I can't find it anywhere. And also Etude has discontinued the Proof 10 eye primer. Good call because the shape and the bottle of it is a really awkward shape. I didn't, end up, I didn't like it. Oh wait, hold up. Etude is releasing shading sticks. Like this over here. I just, I just saw this. Oh my god. So they are coming out with, I think, two shading sticks if i am not wrong they have a warm and a cool version only two shades kind of expected from key beauty brands unfortunately oh this is new do we remember the play 101 contouring sticks <laughs> and pony promoted them i was i really really wanted one to be honest but for some reason i didn't get one for <laughs> back then but oh okay so this is like their latest huh Six hours ago. Okay, so at the point of filming this, this was just released not too long ago. I've never tried cream contour products before. I tried powdered contour products, but I've never tried cream ones before, so... Ooh, this looks really, really appealing, and I kind of want to get into more cream products for more of that, you know, clean girl, wet looking look I guess so yeah today's look was a little bit kind of going in that vibe I wanted to focus on the skin a little bit more we'll have to stick around and see what this contouring product will look like and I want to see some swatches before I make any you know informed purchases also Bia the brand is releasing a ballet core kind of collection they are releasing two eyeshadow palettes two lip tints as well as a pink egg yourself maker if I'm not wrong that's how it looks like I really like the theme of the collection. I think a lot of brands are hopping onto the whole ribbon, ballet core kind of idea. I think it's a trend as well on TikTok as well, having like ballet core for outfits. And Bia, I remember is like the elf of Korea being very like affordable and cheap and all that. I have a feeling that this is not elf price point, if I am not wrong. This is going to be ranging around like the high 10s to mid 20s price point if I'm not wrong. So the eyeshadow palettes, one of them is a little bit warm, the other one is a little bit cooler. I actually don't mind this eyeshadow palette because you can see that there's actually some depth to it. However, I must say that the colours are a little bit too similar to one another, especially like the medium deep kind of colours, that two 
grayish mauvey browns the mid-tone ones yeah it's, it's a little bit too similar the lip tints are called lu, 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 lu. <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce it lulu tint color oh you have five five colors okay oh this is the original lineup so this lu tint is already a uh, existing lineup but they're adding two new colors to it so it's kind of that kind of milky light kind of color one is very like light pink and the other one is more of a light peachy kind of color Ooh, it's 22 dollars for one of these this is like on the same price point as like cleo lip tints at this point wow i didn't know bia had up their prices so much but at the same time i can see that they have up their packaging and branding so so much as compared to maybe like five six years ago so i can't really complain and i'm really curious about it right now so We'll see, we'll see, maybe, maybe it's on the wish list. This has been out for a while, but I'm just gonna talk about it briefly. The 3CE Hazy Lip Clay. You get 10 new shades in this new formula from 3CE. Personally, I look at the formula and I'm like, dang, that looks heavy. I know this formula called lip clays are very popular in general, especially in like Sea Beauty. I know that another brand that does it is like what? Kaleidos Makeup. They also have their own lip clays as well. Personally, I'm a little bit skeptical because I don't really like having that thick, heavy formula on the lips. When I look at the swatches 3CE has done, I am not a big fan of it. In general, I don't really like even like the velvet lip tints as well. Personally, they're not just, they're just not my thing. So they look really pretty though the colors themselves they have this type of like mutedness a little bit of that gray tinge to it for some reason i think it's a really good color range it looks like you get three browns three mauves a nice good chunk of it is kind of like warm reds i realized that 3ce does a lot of very warm kind of colors and i'm just like eh, a little bit but i think it's a decent range could it be better yeah but you know, I kind of like the mauve colors. Again, what's new? I don't think I'll be picking this up just for the fact that I know I wouldn't enjoy the formula. Unless one of y'all have tried this out, please let me know. Is it heavy and thick on the lips? I just want to be a little bit more conscious of how I spend my money nowadays. So I don't want to buy like 10,000 lip tints and they all spoil on me in like 2025, 2026. Do you think K-beauty brands are hitting the mark right now when it comes to all of these new releases like the quality the packaging the concept everything i would love to hear from you guys is it a yay is it a nay or is it a meh kind of thing let me know down in the comments below and if you guys enjoyed this video or you found it helpful help your girl out leave a like subscribe down below and if you want to check out the glow fixing tint a review that I mentioned earlier, you can check out this video over here and I will see you guys over there.